So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Bradford City's entire 2023 summer transfer window. We're going to be grading it at the end as well. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could turn it 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get a comment as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on our entire transfer window we're going to be going through every arrival departure contract renewal all that sort of stuff and see how Mike Hughes built his squad from the end of last season to how it is now looking now I wanted to leave this a couple days because there were strong rumors we went to sign at centre-back Jonathan Tompkinson on loan from Norwich it's now after six o'clock on the 5th of September and I feel like if that one would have gone through then that would have been confirmed as a done deal by now or you would at least like to think so despite him being in the home end when we played against Mansfield on Saturday Today. It doesn't look like that's eventually gone through, so I'm not really too sure what has gone on there. But make sure to drop a like on there for me, subscribe if you're new as well, and let's get into it. We start out then on the 29th of May 2023, where Andy Cook has signed his new contract with the football club. He obviously signed a new three year deal, and I think at the time it was something that everybody was really happy to see. We all probably expected that he wouldn't quite hit the 31 goals, and I think it was eight assists that he got last season, you know, getting 39 goal contributions in a season is absolutely incredible and then this season I think everyone probably expected it to happen you know he had such a brilliant year last season we gave him a three-year deal 32 years of age and then he's not exactly being the most prolific in the world and he's currently injured as well going to be out for a couple of weeks according to Mike Hughes at the moment so it has been a tough season for him so far but he massively deserved it after an incredible season last year and even now even though he's you know missed them chances against Stockport and you know he's had a couple half chances as well that he's missed I'm still you know, don't think that hindsight's a wonderful thing from this point of view. You know, I think that it was still the right thing to do. I personally do believe and think anyone who would have said that you were stupid to not give Andy Cook a new deal at the time, I think in my opinion, you know, that would be absolutely ludicrous. But our first signing of the summer then came on the 6th of June 2023, where Clark Adore joined from Barnsley. He was released by the South Yorkshire outfit and he signed a three year contract with the football club. When he signed, we thought he was going to be a left back, left wing back, something like that. But he's actually been playing as an attacking midfielder so far in his time at Bradford City and he started out quite well in the first couple of competitive matches you know had a really good performance away at Crawley scored at home to Colchester as well and then since then he's been you know had an injury or two in there and his performances have been a little bit inconsistent a little bit anonymous for me in my liking so let's see a bit more from Clark Adore he's obviously not going to be available for Saturday's game against Grimsby he's been called up to the Kenyan national squad so congratulations to him it might mean Bobby Poynton gets the start on Saturday but obviously Clark Adore was our first signing of the transfer window channel memberships are now cheaper than ever with tier 1 costing just 99p tier 2 has been reduced from 3.99 a month down to 1.99 a month and tier 3 has been reduced from $8.99 a month down to just at $4.99 a month. Your support, as always, is massively appreciated. And the more members that we have, the better the content will be. Enjoy the rest of the video. Two days later, then, on the 8th of June 2023, we saw Liam Rydow sign a new one year contract with the football club. Obviously, a left back in a position that we needed to get some more options in at the time. You know, obviously, we knew Matty Folds was probably going to move on, and we saw Talaji Bola go back to Rotherham. So, we needed a left back. And for me personally, I said it at the time, Liam Rydow right out didn't deserve a new contract with Bradford City. He had to be a backup at the absolute most whenever he's featured so far this season. He's been poor, massively, massively underwhelming. I don't really know why he got given a new contract apart from the fact that he's experienced because he offers absolutely nothing on the football pitch. Poor, slow, can't really cross, can't dribble with it. He's got a really poor first touch, not good going forward, not good defensively. I just don't really see what he does offer and in my opinion, that was a poor piece of business giving him a new contract. The day after, we did see the departure of Matty Folds on the 9th of June 2020. 23. He joined Harrogate Town at for an undisclosed fee. Obviously, spent the second half of the previous season on loan with our Yorkshire neighbours, and then he decided to go there on a permanent deal. And I can't really blame him all too much, to be fair. Though it seemed like him and Mike Hughes didn't get on all too well. So from that point of view, it makes sense for him to go out and play football. Having watched Lewis Richards and a man who will obviously get onto later on in this video, I think Richards is an improvement on Matty Folds. While I like Matty Folds and I think he's better than Rydal, I don't think it folds age after playing first team football quite frequently he wants to be sitting on the bench now so it made sense 
at the time, obviously, we got a bit of money in for him as well. And I do wish him all the very best at Harrogate Town. After that, we had to wait a week for some more business. On the 16th of June 2023, we saw our second arrival of the summer. Ash Taylor joined on a two-year deal from Kilmarnock. Central defender, position that we needed to improve in. And he's less than impressed so far, let's say that. He had a underwhelming pre-season and then the first game away at Crawley he was absolutely shocking he had an absolute nightmare in that one and after that game he got subbed off because of injury hasn't featured since there as well and from what I've seen so far I wouldn't be against not seeing him play for Bradford City again I don't think he's anywhere near good enough I don't really know how we've managed to pull off a sign in this port. It's not even like we've written him off after one or two games. Like, I think the writing's on the wall for Ash Taylor. It's not going to be a sign that's going to work out at Bradford City. We were warned by Walsall and Northampton fans. And for me personally, he's just nowhere near good enough to be playing for Bradford City. And hopefully he manages to turn it around, but I just can't quite see where he currently makes it into that side. I personally think Odyssey is better than him. Again, slightly different type of centre halves, but I think for me personally, Ash Taylor is currently our fifth choice centre back. Two days later then, we saw a triple contract renewal. Three young lads coming up from the under-19, obviously. They've been in and around the first team and all that sort of stuff over the last season or so, but they've all did sign one-year professional contracts with the football club. Harvey Rowe being a right-back, Bobby Poynton being an attacking midfielder, and Dylan Yumby being a striker as well they were all announced at the same time and it's always good to see your academy graduates getting new contracts especially Bobby Point and he's been brilliant so far this season I've been massively impressed with him and obviously we didn't see Harvey Rowe throughout the whole of pre-season a lot of competition in his position and Dylan Yumby we saw an odd appearance here and there but he didn't really impress Point and certainly did though in every game he's played so far he's looked brilliant quality on the ball energy gets what it means to play for Bradford City and I think in years to come he could definitely be the man where the armband up for Bradford City I think it's just absolutely beautiful to see your own talents getting opportunities in the first team and I think he more than deserves it you know whether he's an academy graduate or not Bobby Poynton is one of our better players so far this season for me personally so I'd like to see him start on Saturday and whatever position that he does play and he always gives you 110% I think he's been quality so far this season for me two days later then we saw our third arrival of the summer, uh, summer, summer sorry Kevin McDonald joined from Exeter City on a two year deal I believe it was a two year deal anyway I think he's 34 years of age now obviously former Fulham midfielder and from what we've seen of him so far obviously didn't really have much of a pre-season because of a hamstring injury that was carrying on from his time with Exeter I think there is certainly a good player in there I think when you're playing at home you need to dictate the game and control it nicely I think he's certainly a man who suits that obviously he played one game and then got injured again which wasn't ideal but I think when you're playing against the teams like for example Carlisle last season where your midfield's going to be scrappy you're going to be a second ball chasing sort of game Kevin McDonald's not really a man for that sort of game so it seems like he's He's going to have some good games. He's going to have some bad games. I can't say I've been massively impressed with him so far, but I don't think he's done anything too wrong. We've not really seen him enough, to be honest with you, to judge him so far. But a two-year deal for a 34-year-old who's fairly injury-prone does concern me slightly, in my opinion. After that, we saw what has been the best signing of the summer probably throughout the whole league in my opinion. Alex Patson joined on a three-year deal after turning down a new contract with Harrogate Town and I mean what a signing, what a man he's been so far for us. Unfortunately he's currently injured and he's going to be out for a few weeks but I think he's got some sort of damage to his hamstring which is a massive loss for us because he's been brilliant so far. I think he's scored three goals for us, obviously he's scored all them three in a row as well. Brilliant goal away at Accrington, great goal at home to Colchester and a nice finish away at Stockport as well. A goal scoring midfielder is something that we have lacked for years so to see him come in with his energy in there as well, his commitment, he absolutely, he just gets it already what it is to play for Bradford City. I think this one could turn out to be a brilliant signing in years to come. I think even as of right now, he's been absolutely exceptional for us so far this season. In my opinion, has been our best signing so far from what we have seen. We then had to wait five more days when I'd actually gone on holiday for our next signing. Tyler Smith joined the club again on a three-year deal after being released by Hull City. Obviously, a striker provides a different option to the ones that we already had in there with you like to have died. Derbyshire, Cook, Oliver, it was someone who's got pace and running behind and scored one goal so far for us, obviously that penalty away at Wrexham in the Carabao Cup and I think there is certainly a player in there in Tyler Smith, I don't think he's ever going to score you 20-25 goals, I don't think he's that type of striker but he's not really had the service so far to really tell that from you, know, I think in the chances that he's had he's looked promising and he's been playing out of position for the, the majority of the time so far he's been playing as more of a left attacking midfielder rather than a striker and when he has played up there he's not looked too bad to be fair and like I said 
provided a different option, so I didn't mind that signing whatsoever, in my opinion. After that, a day later, while I think I was soaking up the sun in Barcelona, Alex Gilead signed a new contract with the football club, and again, I wasn't over the moon with this one because I don't think he's good enough to be a starter. With rumours last season, he was one of our highest paid players as well, but he signed a new two-year contract with the football club, and from what we've seen of him so far, he has been... Injured quite a lot, I think that's fair to say, but in the opportunities that he has had, you know, he's shown that he has got the experience and the leadership to come on and, you know, try and influence games. And I think obviously he's fairly versatile, can play central midfield or at wing back, so it does help quite a lot from that point of view. But I don't mind Gilead, I just think that money could have been potentially been better spent elsewhere, but he's a bit of a leader in that change room, and I think he has been missed over the last game or two to get, really rally the troops because we've not got too many leaders in our squad and Gilead is certainly one of them and he's not a bad option to have off the bench especially compared to what we have been bringing off the bench over the last couple of matches. The day after while I was in a zoo in Barcelona Daniel Oyegoke joined the club on loan from Brentford's B team and seemed to come in with good pedigree. MK Dons fans weren't too appraisal of him but has done very well in England's youth setup and since he's come in he has failed to impress. Sent off on his competitive debut and hasn't really impressed whatsoever, looks poor on the ball, not really offers much going forward, really poor defensively, he's been caught a few times and I think it was a signing we didn't really need to make with how good Brad Halliday was for his last season. I don't really know why we tried to change that and bring in Oyegoke who has flattered to deceive so far in my opinion. I thought from what we saw of him in pre-season there was certainly the potential there for him to develop but he definitely cannot play in a back three. At wing back I don't think he's good enough going forward or defensively, I don't think he's better than Halliday whatsoever and Halliday seems to have already displaced him or you go okay came on and played central midfield against Mansfield and also Wrexham and I actually don't mind that because I think that could suit him a little bit more where you don't have to be as defensively switched on as what you do at wing back and I think he's got the athletic build to certainly play as more of a box-to-box -box central midfielder because he can be quite clumsy and rash in his tackling you know we saw him put a, a shocking tackling towards that uh, towards the end of the game against Mansfield but I think he has got the athletic build to potentially play as a central midfielder in my opinion a day later then while I was still on holiday, Heath Richardson signed a new contract with the football club, third choice keeper, again another youngster, academy graduate, it was just nice to see really, we all kind of expected it to happen, I don't really know why it took until the day we got back to you know training our first day back to get announced and all that sort of stuff we then move on to our only piece of business in and out that happened in July and that was on the 8th of July when Finkels and Dawson left the club on loan once again obviously another one of our right backs that we needed to get out the door ridiculous that he got that long term contract I don't really know why because he didn't really offer much when he got that new deal since then has massively flattered to deceive and I don't think he's ever going to be good enough to play for Bradford City his contract with the football club does expire at the end of this season and he has joined Blythe Spartans I do believe on a season long loan I think I'm right in saying they're in the Vanarama National League North so that tells you everything you really need to know about Cousin Dawson never really going to be good enough to play for Bradford City again in my opinion moving on then into August this was quite a busy month and quite a significant month for the football club as well Jake Young left the club on the 2nd of August to join Swindon Town on loan and what a spell he's had so far I mean he scored in one game, the same amount of goals as Bradford City have in the league so far this season. He scored four in one game. He scored, I think, two goals and two assists away at Wrexham, forced Ben Foster to retire. And like what I've said so far, we needed to see that consistency out of Jake Young. And Mark Hughes is playing him out of position. He's not a left winger. He's not a left attacking midfielder. He's a striker. And who would have thought playing Jake Young as a striker would get the best out of him where he doesn't have to do defensive work, where he can focus in the final third. He scores goals as Jake Young. And I really do hope that he keeps it up because he's proving Mark Hughes wrong and do I think there's a future for Jake Young at Bradford City not under Mark Hughes in my opinion I think the club need to realise that Young will probably be here longer than Mark Hughes especially with the way things are going with the fans they're starting to get really frustrated with Mark Hughes and his boring defensive style of play I think with Young's long-term contract obviously he's got the end of this season then one more and we've got the option of a further year I think Young could definitely outlast Mark Hughes so I think from a club point of view we need to try unless he has a really good spell now with Swindon and has 20 goals by January and a championship club comes in and offers 500k for him then you'd obviously go and take that but I think that's pretty unrealistic to happen I personally like Jake Young like I say if he's in League 2 for a reason he's gonna have some bad games but I think overall Young is a good asset to us and I think with our striking options at the moment with Oliver and Cook being out injured Derbyshire proving to not really offer too much and Smith being your only real option Jake Young would have been a nice 
option to have up front in my opinion as of right now and he has since joined Swindon Town on a season long loan. 12 days later then on the 14th of August another one of Harry Lewis's coffee club Ryan East left the club on loan obviously another central midfield option and again would be quite useful as of right now with our injuries at the moment we knew we needed a big squad this season and we've let some of our fringe players go who weren't too bad to be fair I really like Ryan East he joined National League side Rochdale I was really surprised to see him make that step down into the National League I think he's more than good enough to be playing in League 2 there was an argument at one point he should be starting for Bradford City as well. I think as of right now, because of our injuries, he would certainly make it on that bench, in my opinion. And I think he's doing pretty well at Rochdale so far. Their fans seem to rate him quite highly. And I quite like Ryan East, so I really do hope that he smashes it at Rochdale. And again, he might find himself back in that Bradford City first team. After that, four days later, we completed our next summer signing. Lewis Richards joined the club on an initial two-year deal with the option of a further year for an undisclosed fee from Wolverhampton Wanderers and we knew nothing about him but from the appearances that we've seen him have so far me personally away at Morecambe at home to Crewe and away at Mansfield as well I think he's looked really really impressive very good going forward very solid defensively as well trickery good technical ability decent pace and I think he's a massive improvement on Liam Rydalg in my opinion so I'm really happy to see more of Lewis Richards going forward and I think that one is a pretty decent signing in my opinion 10 days later then our final August signing we saw the signing of Adam Wilson come in from TNS over in Wales. Again, another three-year deal given out this time to Adam Wilson, who is a right winger, I do believe, left-footed. It's a bit of a Scott Banks replacement, it seems to be. Obviously, made his debut away at Wrexham in the Carabao Cup, came on for the last seven minutes plus stoppage time, took a penalty, scored a penalty, and I wasn't at the Wrexham game, so I can't really comment on him all too much, but he seems like an exciting prospect. We move on then to our transfer deadline day business. The first thing that we saw was Chisholm Afoka join the club on loan from Aston Villa and he didn't make his debut. I've not seen him play football yet. He's never had a professional loan spell yet so I can't really comment all too much. Villa fans seem to think that he has certainly got the potential to make it as a professional footballer so we'll have to wait and see on that point of view. After that we then saw our next signing Rehan Tulock or Tulock. I'm not really, I'm still not really too sure. He also joined the club on loan this time from West Brom. I'm not really too sure what his position is. He's just described himself as a forward. I don't know if he's a left winger, attacking midfielder or a striker but I think he is a striker. A forward to me would suggest a striker, so I'll put him as a striker. That's where he certainly played when he came on off the bench against Mansfield, and he ran around a little bit, didn't really show too much quality on the ball, but didn't really have too many opportunities to do so. So I'm not going to judge him off of 20, 25 minutes away at Mansfield. So we'll have to wait and see again on that one. Then our final piece of business then was Luke Hendry leaving the club on loan. He joined Hartlepool United on a season on loan. Obviously gone back to a club where I think we originally signed him from, didn't we? Especially on this occasion anyway. And that was our final piece of business. I was quite sad to see Hendry go. I think he was certainly better than Oyugoke in my opinion. But again, he probably wants to go out and play first team football. And I think if he thinks he can do that at Hartlepool United I certainly don't blame him whatsoever and there you have it then there is our business do I think our squad on paper is stronger than what it was last season in certain areas I think our midfield's definitely stronger than what it was last season we've got more striking options is the quality as good as last year uh, we'll have to wait and see from that point of view defensively I think we've got the players to be stronger than last season I think our squad is I'd probably give our transfer window a C plus. I think it's slightly stronger, but we're also slightly weaker in some positions as well. But overall, I think we have improved. It's a C plus or a B minus. I'm not really too sure where I'm at. Somewhere around there. But there we have it then. There are my thoughts on our 2023 summer transfer window. If you have enjoyed watching, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get a comment as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on our transfer business do you think we're stronger weaker than last season who do you think is going to be our best signing and is there any sort of transfer business that we're going to regret going forward thank you all very much for watching have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all very soon for another one peace